Father's Day to you out there, every single father. And I'm not talking about just biological fathers, but everybody who has impacted, contributed, nurtured, groomed, given guidance to a child or a young person out there. Today we celebrate you. Today is Father's Day. And though the standpoint is about women, we know the role of a man. Some men who understand what it means to be a human being. So today we are celebrating fathers. We say happy Father's Day to you all. If you've been celebrated, we thank God. If not, huh, well, we say that. There's always room for improvement. Whatever the reason may be, may God himself speak to your spirit, soul, and body. And may next year be an exceptional year for you too. Because something will change in your life. Today, the standpoint, we decided to celebrate some fathers. They are biological fathers. But they become national fathers. Yes, I'm talking about doctors who are at the front line when it comes to COVID-19. As you know, I was one of those in the mandatory quarantine, and I saw some of them. Yes, they may be out there doing their best, giving of their best, but they have their fears. Some of them have also, through their service in taking care of people with COVID-19, have become infected. Their daily fears and worries. They have their own wives and their children. Today we've decided to hear their stories and to celebrate them. Well, let me say thank you to GTP for my cloth. This is New Style, GTP New Style. My dress was made for me by Brie Radra, the one and only Brie Radra. Thank you so much to her. Thank you to Maybelline. New York for my makeup product, and as always, beautifully done by Nax Beauty Studio. They are the ones to look at for. They are the ones to call. When you need anything makeup, they can do the one-on-one -on -one tutorials for you as well. Well, normally do my hair at Exotic Trends. Now, because of COVID, um, they make sure that you have to book an appointment before you go in there. We take a break. When we come back, we meet three doctors who have lived it, who have seen it, who have experienced it, and who are determined to keep doing what they've been called to do. We take a break. When we come back, it is all about these exceptional fathers. We'll be back. Welcome back to The Standpoint. Today is Father's Day and we are celebrating some unique fathers who are really sacrificing, not just for their own families. In fact, they are putting their own families at risk whilst they sacrifice to save the rest of us. And so today we just want to celebrate them. Hear their stories and let people know that they are human beings too. So if you and I are afraid, so are they. Well, let me say thank you to GTP, who are our sponsor for The Standpoint. And today's program, we are being supported by Hotman Shoes, Sally Beb, who also make bags for men, and Green Essentials, um, Lepifania Gifts, and more. We are also being supported by Mami X, who does everything tie and dye, bed sheets, curtains, I mean, face mask or nose mask, whatever you want to call it. So we are also being supported by GTP, who have given us some... No, I won't say it now. I just want it to be a surprise. So we just want to say all those who have supported us for this particular program. Now to my set. They are really the professionals. But I'll plead with them that when I mention your name, you take your mask for us to see your face because we are ce I mean, celebrating. Just see your face before you cover up again. And maybe you will see how it is done properly. Okay, so seated right opposite me is Dr. Della, as you see, who is a pediatrician at Kolebu Teaching Hospital and National COVID Treatment Center, Ga East Municipal Assembly. Welcome to the standpoint. Can we see your face, please? Uh huh. Okay. So I'm Very sure you're, some of your patients have seen you now. <laughs> okay. So next to him, I have Dr. Joseph Oliver Kome, infectious disease physician. Hey, doc. Infectious disease physician. Just for you, you are right at the center of it. COVID or not, you are infectious diseases. 
<laughs> okay. And that's the Dr. Oliver. Nice to have you on the standpoint. Thank you. And next to Dr. Oliver is Dr. Ernest Kunedu Asiedu. He's head of quality management unit, Ministry of Health. And let me declare my interest here. He's family. So I know him very, very well. You know, welcome to the standpoint. Thank you. Now, let me say, let me tell you the story. Dr. Oliver and Dr. You know, <laughs> Della. So, you know, I was part one of those who went to mandatory quarantine. So I was there for two weeks. Then after first week when the test was done, everything, I had a knock. And, you know, when they are coming, they have a way, they bang on the door. And your heart skips a bit. And then I open, and it was Dr. Siedu. I, I couldn't even make him out because, you know, I was in another world. So I said, oh, then I said, oh, Dr. Siedu. Then Dr. Siedu came to sit. He was the first person to come to my room. I've been there for more than a week. So the first person to come to me. And I've tested um, negative the first time. I was waiting to test the second time. So I was still anxious. Dr. Sidu came, we talked everything. And as soon as he left, I sanitized the whole place. <laughs> <laughs> I sanitized the whole place. Meanwhile, he said, uh, I did some video because he had heard that people were saying I'm lying, I'm not in quarantine, and that I'm just doing it. So when he came there to the African region hotel where I was, and then he came and he said, oh, I heard the people were saying this, and they said, ah, is this where you start to do the video? I said, yeah. I said, and I've come to sit here. And I said, doc, I've tested negative. I said, but you have to test for the second time. And then he left at me. I was also anxious that maybe he has also come to visit me, you know. That is yeah. how worried we are you know, about COVID. But let me start with Dr. Oliver. You are the center of it. Infectious disease. How, how long have you been in that center? How long have you been working there? Um, so Ghana got its first case yeah. around the 12th or 13th of March. March, yeah. So then we started working in Ridge Hospital. Okay. And then we started getting more cases. And then when we had the mandatory, those from mandatory quarantine, we needed to have a place to see more cases. And so we moved over to Ga East. So I've been in Ga East since the 23rd of March. Mm -hmm. And so how, how does it feel like you having to see people with, you know, COVID-19 every time? What goes through your mind as a person first? Some time ago, I put up a post on my WhatsApp status. Mm -hmm. And that evening, I got a lot of calls from my colleagues. They said for the first time, they were feeling a little guilty, thinking about only themselves and not about those of us who've been working in the treatment center. Right. You go there every day. You see the patients always. But when you go back home, you now wearing this mask is a little difficult. When you go back home, you always have nasal stuffiness. Yeah. And you also know that nasal stuffiness may be the beginning of the symptoms of COVID. Mm -hmm. So as you lie in bed, you have nasal stuffiness. And sometimes from the stress that you've gone through throughout the whole day, you may have some chest pain. So now you have nasal stuffiness mm -hmm. and you have chest pain. And you start asking yourself, is today the day I'm also coming down with COVID? So there's a lot of psychological stress right. on those of us who go in there right. and come. You go there and everybody sees you as a superhuman being. Yeah. You are brave. Yes, when you have patience, you must be brave. When you get back home, then you look at the reality of your bravery. The reality of your bravery. He said that is when you, go, you get to know that you're human, yeah. you know. Now... Dr. Della, you are already in a difficult place having to work with children and seeing children go through all sorts of things. Now, COVID has been added to your case as well. Do you see children that are having, I mean, suffering from COVID or you, you see all patient, patients? Well, I see all patients. I see all patients because, uh, like my boss here said, mm -hmm. when the, the center in Gais was set up, uh, we went for a training one day and then they were like, we need to set up an ICU and we need volunteers. Mm -hmm. We had just gone there to, I mean, train ourselves so we could go back to our department in Kalibu and help set up the place for the yeah. kids. We did volunteer with the hope that, I mean, if God forbid any child were to come down, we did, mm -hmm. we'd be prepared. As opposed right. to when adults came down, we did and were not really set up. So the, the initial offices were, were challenging. Because the first patient I saw, 
uh, or I helped attend to was really ill yeah. from such a healthy, happy person mm -hmm. into bedridden with oxygen and really fighting for your life. So th that, was, that was a tough, I mean, scene for me to, to, to see here. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Oliver, how did you feel the first time you lost your first patient? Well, um, I was just telling them today that I'd spoken with a person at 9 p.m. before I left the hospital. And I was preparing to do something for him the next day. But he passed away around 1 a.m. Since then, we've lost about two more. But then, looking at the numbers who are living, right. compared to the numbers that have died, it's taken away that, 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 yeah. that, that feeling. But that's not to say that those who are dying, they don't count, they don't matter. They still hit home. They are, they are, some right. of them are fathers. Okay. Oh, yeah. And a father with young children, and to lose your life. It tells you that we cannot transition at any time. Yeah. Today you are healthy, the yeah. next day you are fighting for your life. Okay. Dr. Siedu, <laughs> you, you, I know you, you won't tell me that one, but it is scary. <laughs> you are the ministry, so your ministry is spearheading it. You are a medical doctor yourself. You can't tell Dr. Oliver and Dr. Della to go and do something when you are not doing it. So you, as a matter of you don't have a choice. When I was in quarantine, you moved from one hotel to the other. How did you feel like? Well, um, I think to start with, we, we heard about how people were dying in other countries. And so on the 21st, 22nd, when we had to start the mandatory quarantining, for me, it was exciting mm. to, to benefit from. Yeah, it was that exciting kind of, for you. Yes. Yeah. You know, I have a background in epidemiology. I'm a field epidemiologist okay. also. And I've led um, meningitis outbreak investigation, H1N1, you know, supported some cholera outbreaks. Okay. And I think that in the first week, I think I was, I was swimming. I was just telling Oliver that I was swimming in it. <laughs> and so when the first results came out, you know, we got 79. In, in one of the hotels that I was really there, we got 23. You know, and they said, hey, the thing... So the positive is real in Ghana. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it hit me. And I went to rooms and tried to encourage people, especially mm -hmm. and I, there were some conflicts. People were mm -hmm. fighting me here and there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, as a country, we didn't know how it was going to look like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so by the day, it kept changing. And then different um, agencies that were playing their role right. had a certain mandate. So for example, as far as the national security is concerned, we had the BNI, we had the police, we had the military. Everybody is doing what they were expected to do. So for us, the medical team, we were the ones that I would say were a bit flexible because we understood these things. Mm -hmm. And even if the people were sick, these were the type of people that we cared for right. in our health facility. So from time to time, we had to organize a small meeting mm -hmm. and get all the security guys and the medical team together to discuss mm -hmm. how we're going to manage the flexibility. Mm -hmm. And I keep telling people that, um, see, the people who have come could have checked into these same hotels on their own. Yeah. And so we need to find a way to manage it, you know, because after 14 days, mm -hmm. when everything is fine and they go out, mm -hmm. they are the same people we are likely to meet. Mm -hmm. And when the tables turn, you know, we don't also want to be on the negative the side of things. Of so for me, the, the whole quarantining period was quite exciting. Mm -hmm. It gave me a lot of opportunity to learn mm -hmm. a lot of things that we had learned in school mm -hmm. and how to really operationalize it. Even the conflict right. associated with um, outbreak investigation, even how to work amongst your teams. Right. Because then we were getting sometimes conflicting, you know, and right. uh, uh, generally that first part was quite exciting. Okay, Dr. Adela, you said you were married for five years. You have two kids. Dr. Oliver, how many years of mine? 13 years. 13 years. years. Okay, how many kids? Three boys. Three boys. Three little men. Uh, three little men. Yes, three Young men. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm eight years and I have three. Uh, also two boys, have three. Two boys and one girl. Okay. Now, I'll take a break. When we come back, we'll get into your homes <laughs> to see what they think about daddy and what they know about what daddy is doing. And when daddy gets home, um, the usual daddy who will hug them and be jumping around, what does daddy do now? Well, let me say thank you to our supporters. Go God, you God. As a woman and a man, Yogurt is very good for you. And if you have to go for Gogot, yogurt, it has to be Gogot. Awake purified mineral water and royal drinks by Casa Preco Company Limited. Thank you to House of Foods and to Vera. We are always grateful for your support. Yep, cleaning service, Kodams, 
stationery and more gifts and stationery i mean always father's day listen if you forgot anything it's not too late it's in june we are celebrating fathers so you still have about one week or so to go to celebrate you know fathers we're celebrating them so you go there and get your gift we are so grateful to juice time for also supporting us we take a break when we come back hmm these fathers we'll be back Welcome back to the standpoint. I'd like to say thank you to GTP for my cloth. My dress was made for me by Brie Radua and um, makeup products by Maybelline New York and applied by Nax a Beauty Studio. My guests today are doctors working at the front line. COVID-19. If you think you are afraid, just put yourself in their shoes. Dr. C. I do. there are some doctors who have, in health professionals, let me put in health professionals, who have also become COVID-19 positive. Some of them have recovered and one or two have also passed on. How do the doctors feel? Especially those with children and families. Yeah, so I think... Because uh, you are coordinating everything. Yes. So um, I will leave one side of the question to um, Oliver to okay. talk about it. Yes, but generally, yes, we know some who were frontline in terms of taking care of um, patients who have tested positive, you know, have also tested positive. I think a few days ago, one of our colleagues, a pediatrician from Kolebu Teaching Hospital, also shared her experience with one of the media houses. Yeah. I think a lot of people have no idea that after everything, you know, I also tested positive. Mm -hmm. And, um, it, well, you tested positive? Yes. You did? Yes, I did. <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> this is yeah. the first time hearing. Yes, yes, yes. People didn't really wow. get to know about it. Yeah. But I think this is also a good opportunity for me to let people know. In yes. fact, at the time that I, um, I tested positive, I didn't have any symptoms. But I felt like, okay, when we started the contact tracing, I said, no, I don't think there are many other people who are contact than I am. Yeah. So yeah. I also said I want to be tested because I've come in contact with the positives. Right. And so when I got tested on the 17th, I, I got the results that I was positive. 17th of April? Yes, 17th wow. of April. And so from the 18th, 19th, 20th, and then on the 21st, the next batch of testing was supposed to be done. So I did a test again, the results came negative. But I don't know whether we are moving into the house, but yeah, yeah, yeah. at the we're time... Moving. Okay, hold you know. on. So, <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, sometimes you don't expect that certain people will get it. Yes, I, I knew that mind. I was going to you surprise know? you today. I know. I knew it was good in sanitizing. You see, that's <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so you tested positive for the on the seventeenth. On the seventeenth, yeah. So that means maybe you had had it earlier. Yes. So you had run the course by the time the second test came in. Uh, yeah. Yes. I tried to encourage some of my colleagues that uh, we should test. Right. You know. So. So a difference so, of three days. Yes. Yeah. Wow. But I took the test on the tenth. Okay. So I became positive on the seventeenth. Mm -hmm. But then again, you know. As colleagues, people were, are you sure this thing, you know? Yeah. So on the 17th, when I, I got it, where I was, we were still with some of the positives that we were managing. Right. So I just stayed there. But going back a bit, when we did the first round of tests for the quarantine guests, mm. and then we got some positives. You know, at the time, I was also moving from hotel to hotel. to hotel, yeah. And then when the second one came, I saw, because we were planning for a contact tracing in the third week. Right. And so I said, okay, then I'm also a contact. I hadn't tested at the time. So I didn't go home. But then I told my family at home that, oh, you know, because of the way things are happening now, it's not necessary for me to come home because then I'm a contact. Right. So until I test, I will not be able to come, come home. home. But on the 17th, I knew when I, I got the results, but they were a bit suspicious. Okay. That those days I used to come maybe two, or two days, three days, I'll come home. Cool. But this time, this guy is not coming. <laughs> but the people I feared more, to let them know was my father and my mother. Oh. <laughs> so I, but I was, I was confident to inform my wife. My wife said, I mean, told you, I mean, the, the way and you are swimming. His mother is my auntie. The way you are <laughs> swimming in the thing, we've been warning you that take it easy a little bit, you know. But I told them that I'm very excited that this thing, you know, I have to really get myself into it. So first I didn't tell her. 
And two days later, I told her that, oh, Men now I will not be able to. Oh, I will not be able to be come. Exciting? Well, yeah, so <laughs> I won't be able to come home because we need to finish the cycle, you know, so that. And then finally, I told her that I had actually tested, but I'm fine. So they, nobody should worry. Okay. But she didn't inform my mother. Because when, when my mother knows about it, maybe she will even. Yeah, worry alone. Yes, so I didn't tell her. But any time I told somebody that I had tested positive, they said, they oh, it's a lie. You yeah. are telling lies. Yeah. You don't want to. You think they want us to just feel like, you know. So even for a lot of my colleagues, when I told them that I, was pos I had tested positive, they, they never believed it. Up until wow. now, when I tell people, they, they still don't, don't, they believe. Just don't believe. Because I didn't really show any symptoms. Right. So we were there on the 21st. I did the test. The results came on the, over the weekend. I mean, those days used to take a bit of time. So mm -hmm. then I took another one on the 24th. So both okay. results came as negative. Negative, OK. And I, I tested again on the 28th. So for me, I, 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 in order to convince myself and to continue to love and enjoy what I was doing, any time they were coming to test for any batch who were due for the test, I did another test. Then I tested negative, tested negative. So one time, they saw my name in the lab and said, ah, how often do you want, you want to, to test? test. <laughs> and I said, I, I really wanted to be sure yeah. that I had really turned negative okay. so that I don't also share it to anybody. So afterwards, then I surfaced at home. Then I told them that Just really the reason that why, yes, the reason why I was not coming home was because I also tested positive. But I didn't want to scare them. And that is, and they said, oh, we suspended the way you were not coming. You know, we so I said, that, but now I'm fine. I'm cleared. So I went back to the treatment center and told my colleague there, that, so take you were care of me. <laughs> oh, we, we knew he was positive. <laughs> In fact, we all say all of us are infected one way or the yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. We have recovered and we are moving on. I've also had my challenges. I've been going to do a chest CT scan to make sure everything as well. So once you are there, you consider yourself exposed, yeah. you consider yourself infected, you consider yourself recovered, and we continue to work. So how do you manage the home set setting? Since the 21st of March, I haven't slept in my house. Wow. Okay, so I sleep in my mother's house. My mother has passed 70 years. Okay. She's a retired nurse. Right. So I live with her. She has a room. We, 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 we all live Isn't in the house. Is she more exposed? Well, uh, we all live in the house. We maintain social yeah. distance. And to be frank with you, I can stay in the hall with my mom. If I sit here, she'll sit where you are. And just in case I get up and she has to take something from where I'm sitting, once she moves here, I move to where she is. Yes. Even on Mother's Day, I couldn't hug my, my, my mother. That's the kind of life we are living. But I'm, I feel safe in her house because she's a retired nurse. Yes, Before okay. I get she home, knows what to do. she has this um, blanket soaked with chlorine okay. at, the, at the gate. So I come out of the car, I step in that, I leave my shoes outside her doors, I remove my clothes outside. When I get in, she says, go straight to the bathroom, don't ask me for food. I go straight to the bathroom, <laughs> I bath, and she has Dettol always, hot water. Mm, ready. You finish. When you come back, then she will ask you, what will you eat? Mm. So I feel safer there. Yeah. Okay. She has oh, also God added... Um, At 70, she's still taking care of you. Ah, mm. well, what can we do? <laughs> yeah. She added inhalation of neem tree. Mm -hmm. to, okay. To... Okay, so the day I felt quite bad in the middle of the night, yeah. my nose was stuffy. My chest was tight. In the morning, I didn't feel like going to work. So I sat in the porch. And then I said, oh, I don't feel too fine. I said, let's go to the hospital. Don't worry, I'll deal with it. I called one of my colleagues who works in the ICU and said, are you there? I need to take a chest CT scan. Not even an X-ray, mm -hmm. a chest a CT, CT scan because I don't feel too well. As soon as I said, I'm going to the hospital, she wanted to go. I said, Leave me, I'll go. I went through my periods. I lie in my bed. I get the crumbs. I get the chills. But it's part of life. So we go through it. I didn't tell my wife. All these things I hid from her. She was busy looking after our children. And I was busy looking after myself and other people. So wow. she tried calling me. And she couldn't get through to me. So called my friend. 
and said, I can't find your brother. Where is he? He also couldn't tell her hey. what I was going through. She said, oh, he's around. You know, everybody is busy. Yeah. When the results came and it was a little better, then we, we told her that this is what we had gone. My, ma my mother never told my wife what had gone on. Yeah. Nobody told her. The children, my second but son. But does she know now? Oh, she knows now that I've gone through and come back. But, yeah. but she also maintains what she calls social distancing. Yeah. I've never come close to my wife since I started working in the... That's she, one of the questions people on Facebook wanted me to ask you, doctor. Do you lie on the same bed with your wife's, you uh, know, since... <laughs> if I go home, if I sleep in the hall, she'll sleep in the bedroom. If I go to the bedroom first, she'll sleep in the hall. She maintains... Life. She maintains... So even the children... She's, she's managed to convince them. How old are your children? So the first is 11 going to 12. Okay. They have a nine-year-old and a six-year-old. They're still kids. Yes. You are the baby of the three. Yes, I am. Five I am. years. Yes. You are still in your honeymoon. <laughs> How's it like for you? Do you also sleep or do you go home? I do go home. Uh, I have a, a kind of different arrangement from them. Uh, in the sense that very early on when I knew I was going to volunteer, I had a conversation with my wife, mm. and so I said to her that, well, I want you and the kids to go to my parents' place. My, okay. mom, my mom and my wife have a great relationship. Great, great. And so, and they are older as well, so I knew I wasn't going to be able to visit my, my parents. Mm. So I felt that the safest thing would be to have all of them together, then I'll be alone, and then mm. I know that they are together safe. You know, for as long as this takes. My wife said no. That the kids can go, but she's going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we struck a compromise. So the kids had to go to their grandparents. Initially, I mean, when I come back home, I, I do the necessary rituals, as we call them, right. outside. Yeah. And then when you enter, she'll be like, she's come to hug you. And I'm like, oh, no, you can't hug me. So that was the initial weeks where we really didn't understand the, <laughs> the, the, the disease. <laughs> Then as every as the weeks went by, mm. one day I said, no, don't no, come to me. So oh, please, I'm not listening to this one. So she came and asked <laughs> ah, She missed her husband. Ow. <laughs> so at that point in time, all protocols had been broken. broken. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for the most, most nights, we, we sleep in separate rooms. But somehow, for mm. some nights, we find ourselves on the same bed. <coughs> <coughs> you know, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so... Yeah. Um, we, 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 try and, we try and take as much precautions as we can. When she's going out, she has to wear her mask, mm. uh, hand sanitize. I do the same. I mean, once you're in the treatment center, I say it's probably the safest place in the sense that you know your enemy is in front of you. You, yeah. you take all the necessary precautions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is tough, man. Yeah, it COVID is. COVID has stolen more than our help from us. Yeah, yeah it's true. It's it stolen so much, has. you know, from it us, has. you know. And I don't know, I'm tempted to ask you, will it go away? But it's, today is not about, you know, so much about the disease. This today is about celebrate. You, you, you guys do a lot of education. You've done a lot, even with this one, celebrating you. You are still doing, you know, this. You're still talking about COVID. So today, we just want to let you know that we appreciate you so much for what you're doing. We Sometimes we tend to forget that you are also human. We put our frustrations on you. Dr. Nani is behind the scenes, you know. I used to, he was at my hotel a few times. He goes home and I follow him with calls and I don't WhatsApp messages, asking all sorts of questions, especially when my result wasn't in. <laughs> you know, and, you know, I was, you know, complaining all the time to him. And why have they taken long and this and that, you know. As for Dr. Said, I knew he was in another world. He wouldn't tell me the, the, the true picture because of his position. Oh. And because of the relationship. He would just calm me down. Yeah. And Dr. Nani's voice too is calm. Oh, you know, Auntie Gifty. You know, you people. We'll be back. <laughs>
<laughs> and a third who is always, always, you know, um, thinking about what next. Now, I put the post on Facebook and I have a few comments and I want to read to you. Um, some of them have interesting questions. Um, Belinda Jimano for you, boy said, please, I want to know how possible it is that a husband and wife with children live together, but one member can test positive <laughs> while the others test negative. Um, and then somebody comes in, Angelina Pia says, um, dear, um, our God is great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we have Abu Ajay Ezekiel. He has uh, so many. He says, do they have it in mind that they might infect their family at home since they have attended to infected persons. How do they feel when, whenever they see a person infected with a virus? Has the government started giving them the 150 cities he promised to give them daily? <laughs> uh, we've answered most of the questions except the money part. Okay, Deborah <laughs> Wompe says, you guys are amazing. I pray for God's protection for you and your generation and born. Um, Abena Oakley says, God blessings and protection will continuously be with you for the great work you are doing, praying for all of you. Um, somebody says, I want to ask whether they sleep with their wife on the same bed and what are their children uh, behavior towards them when they see them coming from work. And Melissa said, no, you know what? I looked after COVID patient all the time and I sleep with my husband on the same bed. When we come in contact with a patient, we always protect ourselves. I use PPE all the time and also adhere to all the necessary precautions. That's our profession, my dear. My children are always proud of me. They understand the work I do as a nurse. Almighty God, help us all. And we have Omar, Mercy, Acha. God bless them. It's all God's blessings and Everybody is praising you for what you are doing. And we also want to appreciate. We know that there are many of you, and I'm so glad. And thank you, Dr. Nani, that Dr. Nani puts together the perfect group because you have the perfect experiences. <laughs> so I am so glad that you are the one who made a panel. But we celebrate all doctors, frontline um, health professionals out there. Next week, we are going to have some nurses and lab technicians on the panel as well. But I have a little surprise uh, for you, for all of you, just to celebrate you on Father's Day for the sacrifices you've made. I'm sure if you were sitting in your home, do your <laughs> nine to five jobs, all these things wouldn't happen. <laughs> you know, and so this one is from Sally Beb. They make... Oh, yeah? Yes. Uh, oh, men. So... You to enjoy it immediately. You, you are going to enjoy it immediately. <laughs> immediately. I know, right? That's another one for you. Let me have this. That's true. And then this one. Yeah, yeah you know, let's give it to Dr. Um, Della Labs Browns. Yeah. Okay. So we'll give that one to Dr. Dr. Siedu. So let's swap. <laughs> we also have um, Bessie you. from Mami yeah. X. Oh, yeah? yeah. Finally, when you go home, we, and we you can lie on the bed. Eh? You can oh. lie on the bed. Be lying it's on a the whole bed set. Already, so. The skin size. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> that's it. Um, all of you are getting one. For each one of you two, I have a gift from Lepifania and then a mug is okay. mom. So you can give it to your mother for going through all that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for you, for you. So each one of you has this. Mm. I also have, I haven't finished all. Each one of you are getting six yards of Adipa oh. from GTP okay. for you. Yes. Oh, for you, each one. All the time, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this special uh, Father's Day. And then we also have um, this from Green Essentials. Green Essentials is my sister in law. This is, they call it the black soap, mm -hmm. Alata Semina. Mm -hmm. And then we have the uh, hand washing soap mm -hmm. in there. We have the sanitizer. Oh, I love yeah. it because, you know, it's yeah, easy it to spray. Yeah, yeah. That one, yeah. The hand sanitizer. We have a towel in there for you. We have the cake soap, okay. you know, for you. And then Inkuto uh. body cream <laughs> for you. In the, the Hosman shoes is also giving each one of you a shoe, a voucher for a shoe. So you will get a shoe each from Hosman shoes. 
Now. <laughs> Every day will be a Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then, I haven't finished. Please. We have drinks for you. Royal pack of royal drinks and a pack of water for okay. each one of you. Now, I haven't finished. Now, Dr. Nani, you think you're high. Please come. I have a little package for you because mm -hmm. you also did a lot of work when we went into uh, quarantine. We had to hustle you, so like that. <laughs> this from Green Essentials. Mm -hmm. And then you're also getting this from package from, this from Lepifania. Lepifania yeah. gift. And um, the drinks as well. So we just want to celebrate you and say we are grateful. This is also from, from my wife. Okay. Um, I don't want to touch it because... Okay, of, yes, please but do this, touch it. That's yes. why I sanitize my hands. <laughs> okay. So my wife also, because of COVID, is trying to be very innovative and doing some um, nose masks. Yeah, and then, um, that, so she said I should bring this to you yeah. to try it. Yeah, yeah. this one. And it probably didn't match your dress. I'm yeah. telling you. Now yeah. this COVID thing has come to make people dress in a... A very fanciful way. Did I wear it the correct way? Yeah. I handled it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So that's another one. But that's there. another one. That's oh, a the different one that looks shape. like yeah, yeah, the one that looks, that looks like what really I'm wearing. Oh, okay. Ah. Yeah. We're interested in both blend with what you're wearing. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. No, she, she, she was able to connect. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Trust the instincts of a woman. That's right. Always, <laughs> always, always. Now, before you go, is it true that when you recover from you know COVID? You get some antibodies that protect you from future infection. Maybe let me ask you, Oliver. Yeah. It's good you've asked this question. Right. Um, there are a lot of unknowns about COVID. Okay. The disease is still evolving. Okay. It's a virus. Okay. So you develop antibodies all right. But as to whether the antibodies will protect you or not, nobody really nobody knows. Really knows. Maybe in another few months, we will know whether those who were infected and recovered and had appreciable antibodies right. have been protected for life or Do not. you think COVID will ever go away? Oh, as for COVID, um, it's a very interesting question asking an infectious disease person. <laughs> um, once there's COVID, um, there's work for me to do. <laughs> so COVID, I think, is a virus. Right. Just like we have SARS, which is still around, but we don't record them. We have MERS, which is also in the same family right. as COVID, has come to stay. Yeah. Very soon, we shall all go to hospital and come back. I had my COVID. Yeah. I have recovered. Right. Just like you get your hypertension and you get your diabetes, COVID has come to stay. Dr. Nani. Yes, okay. so um, being a pediatrician, okay. I, permit me to use your, your platform to say one or two things. I mean, in as much as... We've been saying that a lot of children are not coming down yeah. with COVID. Right. We have children coming down with problems indirectly from COVID. Mm. So for instance, in my unit, or even just yesterday, we got a call from the plastic surgeon unit and say, you guys need to do a lot of advocacy right. because I'm, I'm with the Pediatric Society of Ghana as okay. Greater Christ President. Right. Okay. It says, you guys need to do a lot of publicity because we're having too many kids coming in with bends. Mm. Okay, because the children are home longer, right. they are more adventurous. Right. I mean, parents are getting tired mm -hmm. because either two would have gone to school yeah. and then we'll give them a break. We're having children coming down with poisoning. You have families that are coming with problems with hot water bands, uh, children who are putting on weight because they are eating mm -hmm. all the time and not exercising, so obesity is on the increase. Okay. Speaking to the fathers at home, take charge of your home. And that includes protecting your children from common illnesses. Don't be morbidly afraid of COVID and deny them of important health needs that they need to grow with. Mm. Make sure they have their immunization, make sure they're eating well, get them into the compound to exercise a bit. If you have a newborn child who has jaundice, don't stay home, take the child to the hospital because that can create more problems for them than COVID would ever do. Mm. Stay safe and protect your home. Stay safe and protect your home. Dr. Nani, yes. is, is COVID delaying your marriage, your marriage plans? I decided to put you on the spot. Wow. That is a very interesting <laughs> question. <laughs> um, well, it, it, it has, 
affected uh, the way I relate with my mm -hmm. sweetheart mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Um, now, our physical contact time yeah. is much less than it used to be before, but we are making the best out of the other avenues for communication. Yeah. We do talk a lot by phone and also through video right. calls. And it's quite exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, we are both medics. Okay. We talk about COVID, but okay. we like to oh, talk she's about... Oh, uh, a health professional? Yes, okay. she is. Okay, so she's at Keiko's Hospital? Not the hospital, the School of Medical That's Sciences. Okay. She has a lot in common with you. We can talk about that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, will get, you also get shoes from Hosman Shoes. <laughs> thank okay. you, thank you, thank you. Thank <laughs> you for getting shoes from Hosman Shoes. Right. Okay. Thank, thank you so much. And finally, Dr. Siedu, your advice to fathers. Since today is Father's Day, especially fathers. Yeah, it's so the men who are not afraid. Though. We, the yeah. women, we are afraid. Yeah, we are not afraid. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've been in it and we are out. So I would like to also take this opportunity to advise my fellow men yeah. and ultimately um, our wives, our sisters, our mothers, yeah. that COVID has come to stay. We shouldn't be so afraid of it, but we should comply with the preventive measures that the, the, the government has put in place. For example, ensuring that we wash our hands um, with soap and under running water. We also sanitize our hands. We ensure that we adhere to social distancing and then also wearing our, our masks when we are going to any public place. Mm -hmm. And then also to say that when anybody tests positive, mm -hmm. we shouldn't discriminate against yes. the person. Mm -hmm. Finally, I would like to thank my family, my wife especially, who you know, allowed me to stay on the same bed with her. Mm -hmm. You know, As soon as I, I knew that I was positive, I didn't go home, but mm -hmm. as soon as I recovered and I went home. She allowed me to stay on the same bed with her. <coughs> and then as you <laughs> cleared your throat, certainly that is what happened. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm enjoying my wife the way I'm supposed to. Okay. <laughs> hey, Ali, you are singing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm singing because, because I, 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 others are enjoying. <laughs> but we will also enjoy. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you all so much. It's been a wonderful, it's very educative. It's been you know, very exciting, and it's been very candid, and yeah. we are so, so grateful. I mean, it's always has a, a different flavor when you hear it from those at the front line themselves. So we are so grateful. We'll leave you to go home and go and continue celebrating your Father's Day. Thank you to all those who supported. That's Mommy Yes, who gave us the tiny bed sheet, um, Lepifania gift, green essentials, GTP for the cloth, and um, Selena Beb for the bags. I actually didn't know Selena Beb does the bag for men, but it's so beautiful and we're so grateful. Thank you to Royal uh, Drinks and um, Away Purified Water by Casa Preco. We'll take a break. When we come back, I'll give you a bit of me. You know, for years, people have talked about the fact that Mother's Day, people celebrate mothers and so on and so forth. And for some few years now, we try very hard to bring up, you know, fatherhood to a positive light. For people to know that there are great fathers out there, people who are sacrificing for humanity, not just for their children, not just for their immediate family, but society. Because there are men out there doing great things. I got empowered by a father. I am everything I am today apart from God because of my father who believed in me and some male figures in my life. There are many women out there. There are many men out there who are being championed, who are being cheered on by men. So on a day like this, it is just appropriate that we celebrate men. Today, I just don't want us to look at the negative side. Yes, we know. For a long time, society hasn't been very kind to men. But then, as we continue to project and showcase the men who are doing great things, the more I believe young men can learn from them. Who are you? Are you a father? Are you a son? Are you a daughter? How can we help to make this whole fatherhood institution a positive one? 
to the benefit of our society. Because indeed, there is no child without a mother and a father. The child comes into this world because a man and a woman came together. And a sperm and an egg were fertilized. And a child came. It's time to mend bridges. It's not time to bend them. It's time to reconnect. It's time to get our society back on track. So fathers out there, if you know that you've shaked your responsibilities, please go back. Children out there, if you know you have neglected your fathers, please go back. Mothers out there, if you know you are starving fathers of the love of their children, please, let's stop it. I know, I know, I get it. Sometimes there must be a good reason why you don't want the father to come near your children. And if it's for, for a good reason, I say, hey, your children first. But then if it's out of pain, it's of so something that the man has done to you personally, then I say, please, let the children have the love of their fathers. For the love of a father does great things. Happy Father's Day to all fathers out there. Let's learn to do the right thing. Let's position ourselves well. Because without you, society will become one-sided. Just as without mothers, society becomes one-sided. It takes the two, man and woman, to make the society great. As usual, I remain a woman with super crazy faith in God. I know God meant it well when he said that a man shall leave his mother and his father and cleave to his wife. May we do the right thing. Thanks for watching. See you same time next week. Bye for now.